Hey everyone, what's up? And welcome to this kind of updated review on an anime that I talked about a few years ago. I actually did a review on it a few years back. And I did a review on the movie, I talked about it a little bit, and the fact that this movie has basically gathered a very big cult following, if you're an anime fan, that is. And what I mean by that is, I guess only as an anime fan can you truly understand exactly what the symbolisms and certain scenes in this anime movie mean. Sometimes if you're not an anime fan, but you like good animation, you will want to check it out and see what everybody's talking about and even try to make sense of certain situations and scenes yourself. Which apparently is a good idea. Because like I say, if you're an anime buff, or an animation buff, or overall, you want to try to find out exactly what the fuss is about when it comes to certain animes or animations. Well, this one, as you can see in the title card, is one of those animes, if you will, or animations, that when you hear people talking about it on the internet, whether they be anime fans or animation fans all together, and even when you hear people talking about it at, let's say, comic co at conventions, like anime conventions or comic cons, it makes you wonder what the fuss is about, why it's so popular, why is it such a talkative movie, why people love talking about it. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because it's basically, like I said, overall the franchise has a cool following. And I'm talking about revolutionary girl Utena. Now, I don't know much really about it except for what I look up on and study, what I look and study up on. And apparently it started out as a magna, which, of course, with any Japanese magna, evolved into an anime series. Now, the series was about 39 episodes, from what numerous people have said. Now, the manga and the anime series are sort of similar, but different in many, uh, similar in some ways, but also very different. Now, another thing about Revolutionary Guru Utena is that she's also one of those Japanese magnas that not only do they evolve into an anime, but at times will also evolve into a movie. Now, you would think, just like with any anime or magna or even mo or, you know, that precedes a movie, that the movie itself, or the movie's based on, the movie itself would somewhat resemble what you've read and seen, and maybe be part of the continuity in some ways. Unfortunately, with Revolutionary Girl Utena, that's not the case. Instead of Revolutionary Girl Utena, the movie is actually a total retelling in a different alternate world. A different retelling, different alternate world retelling, and all of that. Basically sort of like a reboot, but not really. Well, yeah, it is a reboot. Well, let, let's just put it this way. You know, back in 1990, when New Line Cinema released Ninja Turtles, they sort of stayed true to the elements that we were used to seeing on the, with the 1987, 1980s, 1980s, 90s cartoon series. They stuck to it with a few differences. Sort of in, they sort of gave us a mixture of the comic book, of the original comic books, and the cartoon. Now, here's the thing though. Instead of continuing on, like let's, instead of making the movie part of the continuity, sort of like DuckTales did in Treasure of the Lost Lamp in some ways, as well as Transformers did, did back in 86, Instead, it's a total retelling and a total reboot of the franchise right, for, the theater, for the big screen. And that means when you would watch the cartoon series, which was still going on at the time, and even the comic books that were being published by both Mirage and Archie, you'd see totally different uh, scenarios, totally different timelines, story, timelines and stories and worlds. Well, the same could be said for the revolutionary girl Utena movie. Because just like uh, those that preceded it, like the manga and the anime, 
it's different as well because like I said, just like with Ninja Turtles, it's a reboot retelling in some ways of the origin of how Utena came to the Othro Academy. I'm, I think that's how, how you, how you uh, pronounce it. But how she came to that academy. Now, I'll say this. I'll say this about the anime. It is, vi it is visually very good. The visuals, the animation is tremendous. I mean, you can't expect anything less from Japanese animation. And more so, from what I, from what I have read and heard online, whether it's through Google, whether it's through Googling, doing information on it, whether it's watching reviews and people talking about it on YouTube, the fact is everybody has agreed that the animation is one of the, that is one of the most beautiful animated film, uh, an, one of the most beautiful anime films uh, ever done back in the 90s. 90s, early 2000s, whatever. But it's one of the most beautiful animes they have ever seen. Now, even though it's beautiful and it's animation, the story is somewhat kind of like as some people put it, if you're a true anime buff and true animation fan, you kind of get the idea of where the story and the plot goes in this movie. Basically, the plot and the story is Aunt Utena, basically, at first, is a part of this academy because, you know, her boyfriend, I guess, or whoever, her prince, had died. And basically, her prince, I guess, wants her to move on or something like that. I don't know. Something in that category. But basically, she enrolls in this academy, in this Othro Academy, under the disguise of a boy. That's why she wears a boy's uniform. So she enters the academy under the disguise of a boy, of a tomboy. And she duels all the other students. Now, certain students do kind of discover who she is right off the, kind of, later on in the movie, from what I understand, and some don't. Now, I apologize for that in the background. That's a kid. In the background. I don't know why kids do that. But what I'm saying, and I apologize for my dog, she's barking now. But like what I'm saying, what I'm saying, folks, is that some of the students or fellow students kind of discover who she is later on the later on in the movie, I believe. I'm not totally sure because I haven't seen it in a while. But even though I have it on DVD and I just changed the cover from what you saw to the more Japanese VHS cover. But anyway, like I said, some of the students discover who she is later on and befriend her. That's right, they actually befriend her uh, during the f um, in this. And they kind of accept the fact that she is who she is and she wants to be you know, this person. She wants to be a prince, if you will. Now, of course, this leads to the fact that she starts to develop, well, not exactly right off the bat, but it's Anthe, the princess, if you will, the other, the other girl, the other main character of the film, that's, that's, the, that's basically the prize. She's the rose bride, if you will, the main prize for the duelist that wins these duels, that comes out on top as the victor. And basically, because she's impressed with Utena, not knowing that Utena is a girl, at first, falls in love with her. But then later on, does find out she is a girl, just like everybody else. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Oh, great. So this anime is a Yuri flick, right? Not really. It's not really a Yuri flick, in, in, in a sense. I mean, it is, but not really. I mean, if it, I mean to me, if this movie was to have any rating, I would go with PG-13, because that's what I put on the disc here. PG-13. That's basically the way I look at it. A PG-13 anime. Now, you know, Japan has always produced a very good, very sensible, and beautiful, beautifully drawn anime films and series throughout their history. There's no doubt about that. And a lot of the anime films, most of the time, will make some sense. And for most of the film, this does the storyline does kind of make some sense with, with Utena. It does kind of make some sense 
Because you kind of get the idea later on that Utena wants to go to the outside world, and because she's developing these similar feelings for, for Anthe, she wants to take Anthe with her because she, Utena, is starting to see that this whole academy is nothing more than a facade. In other words, it's not real. It's a prison. It's a dead world, if you will, that they're in, and the only way to escape it is to go to the outside world. In other words, this world. So, basically, here's, here's where the weird factor comes in. There's a lot of visuals throughout the film that kind of don't make sense. Like, you have one visual in the middle, in the early to middle part of the film, where a girl kind of, I guess, gets wrapped up in a sheet, in similar sheets and all that, and acts like a cocoon, and she kind of and visually, you start seeing women that look like him kind of growing wings and becoming butterflies. Which, to some people, would be like, what the, you know, what the WTF, what the fuck, what, the, what am I seeing? Now, that's one thing, that's one weirdness. But there is something in there that kind of gets you knowing that something else is going to happen, something that may top it, top that, something that may top, top it all, that's going to really drive you insane. And I'm not going to give, I'm not going to say exactly where it is in the movie, I'm pretty sure it's around the middle, but this is a scene where you, we have two characters talking, I think it's Miko, Amika, and Juri. Mika and Jory, I believe. And basically, as you're seeing Mika, or Mika, or whatever his name is talking, he basic, you basically see at the side of him, you see some cars coming up in a garage. It's basically inside a garage somewhere. And one of the cars has a license plate with his sister's name on it. Now, this hint, now there's your first clue as to the weird factor may be raised a little bit. Because that indicates what's going to happen later on towards the climax. And this is exactly where some fans, where the cult following for this comes into play, as well as the fact that if you're an anime buff and an animation lover, you kind of understand the symbolism as to why this is happening. This is happening in the climax, in the final 15 to 20 minutes of the film. Basically what happens is after Utina proves herself to Anthe, Anthe basically wants to, I guess, give her her heart, give her the rose, basically say, I am yours now. But Utena, believe it or not, doesn't want to, but now believe it or not, Utena doesn't just, doesn't want to accept it, not right there, she doesn't want to accept that. You know, because she wants to accept Anthe, on the, basically she doesn't want to accept it there, right then and there, she wants to take Anthe with her. She, she loves Anthe, but she wants to take her, but she doesn't want to love her basically in this world that they're in. She wants to take her to the outside world. And the outside world to Anthe at first is kind of like off limits, like it's a dangerous world. You can't go there. And again, this is where the weirdness factor comes in, folks, because this is where it tops it off, according to many people. Basically what happens when Utena tries to take Anthe with her to the outside world, a car wash. That's right, you heard me. A car wash pops out of the ground. I'm not lying, folks. A car wash pops out of the fucking ground. Now, what does this mean? Why is a car wash, after Utena is grabbing Anthe's hand and running with her, pop up and envelop Utena and almost envelop Anthe? But why, why is a car wash suddenly popping up out of nowhere? What's going on? Well, I'll let you know that in part two of this updated review of Revolutionary on Utina, the movie.